Hey, how's it going? Um, <clears throat> thank you for tuning in. Uh, today's topic is going to be about uh, the armor of God. And um, <clears throat> I really want y'all to realize that we are in a spiritual battle right now. We're in a spiritual war. That's why I have my shirt on, Soul Wars. Because we are in a war. Whether you see it or not, whether you believe it or not, it is going on all around us. And ever since I can remember, I've always had this just warrior's mindset. I don't know why. I, it could be just accompanied with being a guy. I don't know. Uh, I've always just thought about not necessarily just the killing aspect, but just, you know, fighting for justice, you know, fighting for what's right, protecting, and, you know, just even analyzing battle plans and all kinds of stuff like that crazy but uh anyway it's cool that God put that in me because he helped me to realize that we need to have that that uh, warriors mindset because we are in a war you know we need to be constantly focused and uh, training for this war that we're fighting daily you know you may not think that you're fighting in a war but you are and oftentimes we're fighting in our minds. But uh, anyway, I got this. Uh, I got this little. It's not necessarily a toy, but it's like a uh, little small figurine, I guess. And I got it to re to remind me to to always be thinking about it because I'm uh, I'm a knight in, in God's army. You know, I have armor, and we're going to be talking about Ephesians. 6, 10 through 20, and I'm going to read the scripture here in a minute, and then break down each of the armor. But uh, I just want you all to realize that you, if you are a true Christian, God gives you this armor. It's not something you have to go out and buy or make. God imputes it to you. He gives it to you. It's just one of the perks, <laughs> so to speak. And I like to visualize Whenever I'm in uh, a spiritual war, war or a spiritual battle, that possibly the demons even see us wearing this armor, this spiritual armor, you know. So even though we can't see it right now, just visualize that it's really on you, because God gives it to you. And like I said, I'm going to break it down. But He talks about the sword and the helmet and the shield and the breastplate and the belt and the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and uh, I just want y'all to think about these as I read it <clears throat> it's not too long but bear with me as I read it and if y'all want to follow along it's Ephesians 6 10 through 20 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to stand against the wiles or the attacks of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, or your belt of truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, or the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, uh, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in, bond, an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak.
Now I want y'all to remember this part here. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Okay, I'm going to get to that here in a minute. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I get into it, man. I just, I have that warrior's mindset and I just, it just pumps me up, you know. <sighs> but anyway, uh, let's break down uh, the pieces of the armor. Uh, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, okay? This is basically, um, you know, if you were to look at it in the natural, it's, uh, metal pieces protecting your feet. You know, uh, basically like metal shoes in a sense. But anyway, if your feet are protected by the preparation of studying God's word, you will have peace. And where you go in spreading the gospel as well. You will have a confidence, and God will lead you by the Spirit where He wants you to go. You see, when you prepare, when you study in God's Word, you're going to have a peace about you. And God's going to lead you where He wants you to go in that, you know? So it's, it's helpful to be in tune with the Spirit. It's helpful to be close to God so that He can lead you. But anyway, let's move on to the belt of truth. Um, the belt of truth holds us up, or it holds us together, you know, knowing that what we believe is truth. Also, if you notice, the belts were used to hold the swords. So when we fully accept that God's word is truth, we are able to hold our swords or the word of God with more surety. Uh See, on this guy's little belt here, you can see that his, this is where his sword goes, his sheath or whatever. He puts his sword in here, and he's able to walk around with it, pull it out whenever he wants to. So that's cool that, you know, to think that whenever we study God's Word, when we uh, study His truth, you know, it's like it's hand, it works hand in hand. All these pieces of the armor are, are uh, linked. You know, we need every piece. We can't just go into battle with just our shield, or we can't just go into battle with just the word. We need all these pieces. <clears throat> but it's good to uh, kind of understand what each piece does. You know, it gives you it gives you a confidence when you go into battle. You know, so that's why I'm making this video. I want to uh, impute confidence to you, or rather, God through me to give you confidence. <clears throat> we shouldn't be timid or scared. You know, when we come into trials and tribulations and persecutions and when we're fighting against the devil you know because God has already made us winners you know we're already we've already won when we're on God's side we've already won the war we just gotta act it out or accept it and allow it to take place <clears throat> but anyway uh, moving on to the breastplate of righteousness this breastplate guards your heart when we are righteous we know that we are doing is right. When we know what we're doing is right. And in our hearts it gives us peace. You know, uh, <clears throat> think about, you know, knights and when they have the, the breastplates. You know, if they get shot there, I mean, they're protected. Their vitals are protected. You know, there's a lot of things that are protected there when you have a breastplate. <clears throat> but uh, in the spiritual, it's nice that God wants to guard our hearts. You know, He wants to guard us. And protect us and uh, and a lot of that has to do with the truth you know it guards our hearts letting us know that God's Word is truth but anyway let's move on to the helmet of salvation this helps our minds it keeps us from doubting our salvation knowing we have salvation gives us courage to go against the devil because he tries to attack our minds so often to cause us to doubt but God wants us to know we have salvation. True Christians, that is. <clears throat> um, I would say probably in my life, I would say uh, at least 70% of the battles that I've faced have been in my mind. <laughs> you know, yeah, we have attacks from friends or family or people that don't like us or whatever that come against us. But who are you with mostly? Yourself. 
you know. I've heard this said, you know, I'm my own worst enemy, you know. So who are we with the most? We're with ourselves the most. So <clears throat> it's awesome that God gives us this helmet to protect our minds because he knows that we're going to be fighting battles. You know, it might not even be against the devil or the demons. We're just fighting against our own flesh, our own mind coming up with evil things. And we're always having to constantly deal with that every single day. Every single day I wake up, I wish I just had some peace of not having to think about a certain thing or any negative coming to my mind. And yeah, God does give you peace. But it's just like it's always a constant battle all the time every day you know and so that's good that God gives us that helmet this protection you know and I know it's mainly about for salvation but it it also helps in all other areas I believe so you know uh, <clears throat> that's one of the things I pray for I say I, I remember that I have the helmet of salvation on my head so I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and that's another thing that we forget that Jesus' name is so powerful it's another weapon in our arsenal. Don't forget to use it. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on to the shield of faith. Um, this protects us from the evil arrows that the devil tries to throw at us. But, but by faith, we choose to believe God over the devil's lies. Our faith is in trusting God, believing his word, believing he truly is there in the first place. When the devil tries to cause us to doubt, we throw up our shield of faith and deflect those fiery arrows. <clears throat> you know, the devil might not just try to cause you to doubt. He may, he may be reminding you of things that you've done in the past. I was talking with my friend, and you know, he said that's one of the things that gets him down. It's just remind things that he thinks about that he's done before. You know. And he thinks that he's not worthy sometimes, you know. And that's what the devil does. He causes you to focus on the past or focus on your past wrongdoings. When God has forgiven you of those things, God loves you. What Jesus did for us is so beautiful. You know, I, I thank him so much. And um, throw up that shield. Whenever the devil comes at you like that, throw it up. Say, no, I'm not going to let that get to me. You know, deflect it every time. <clears throat> but anyway, thankfully, God gives us a weapon to fight back. And that brings us to the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. His Word. I just read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. See, that right there is His sword. You know, I had this sword here. This is nothing. This is nothing compared to the Word of God. This is a, a man-made weapon. This could be easily destroyed. This may not even do anything. <laughs> but God's Word, <laughs> it's sharper than a double-edged sword. You know, that's Scripture. It pierces right in down to the marrow of your bones. It digs down deep inside of you. I mean, you can quote one scripture to somebody and they could possibly be thinking about it for the rest of their lives. Because that's how amazing God's Word is. His Word is beautiful. And it's a weapon. You know, <clears throat> I love it. We must study in the Word in order to be well practiced with our sword, though. Just like any other warrior who trains in battle. Uh, I think about back in the day, you know, knights and, you know, samurai and stuff. They would have to practice often to get good at wielding their sword to be uh, good warriors. You know, you can't just pick up a sword and say, okay, I know how to use this and be good at it. No. I mean, there might be one person in this world who got lucky with it. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> more often times than not, you got to study, you got to practice. And that's what, that's what it's all about in Christianity, man. You can't just 
say, okay, yeah, I believe in Jesus and I'm saved and everything, and then don't ever read the Word. I mean, you got to be practiced to be an efficient warrior. you got to study in the Word. Be diligent. Study, show thyself approved. That's what Scripture says. <clears throat> we may not always have a Bible with us, but we will always have our brains with us. When Jesus was being tempted by Satan, the only thing Jesus did was quote Scripture at Satan. He battled him in the spirit and won. What did Satan do after the third attempt failed? He left. Why? Because Jesus overcame him with the word of truth. You know, uh, like I was saying, you, you know, we don't always have the Bible with us. Um, we're going to have to rely on our minds sometimes. And that, and the only way we can do that is if, if we've been well practiced in the word. You know... <clears throat> I was, I was at uh, my wife's um, Christian school tonight, and uh, talking with a kid there, and he said he's memorized I think like two hundred and something scriptures, and I'm just like, wow, you know, like whole books even. He said like the the Book of John and you know Colossians and all this, and I'm like, man, the whole book. <laughs> And he's, he's like in fourth or fifth grade. He's in fifth grade, I think. And he's already memorized that much. I so wish I would have started out that young, you know. I mean, I can quote scripture, but not not like word for word and verbatim and, and not a whole bunch, you know, like that, you know. But I did get a late start, and I guess that is one thing that I need to start doing better is mem trying to memorize, but the the point of the matter is, is you need to study in the Word. You know, that kid is going to have all this Word built up in him. When he comes against the devil, you know, he's going to be like, no, this is what the Word says. It is written. You know, that's what Jesus did, and that's how we need to follow in Jesus' footsteps. It is written. When the devil comes at you, say, it is written. You know, because the devil will come at you in a sly way a lot of times. He'll come at you on the sneak. You know, twist things up, you know, like he did with Adam and Eve. Did God say, you know, did he really say that? No, it ain't like that. <clears throat> and when when he when he was attacking Jesus, you know, I mean, he was twisting things up. But Jesus was like, no, boom, boom, boom. This is what it is written in the Word. He didn't argue with him. You don't need to get in a debate with the devil. You just quote scripture at him. And then you say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You know, but anyway, <clears throat> uh, so we uh, up to this point we've come to six pieces of the armor, and and right after like I was reading in Ephesians, right after that he says pray. And I always like to think about this. Um, I, I think it's a possibility that prayer is the seventh piece of our armor. You know, our, our another weapon that we have. And I may be wrong, and that's fine, you know, but I like to think of it as uh, a bow and arrow. You know, uh, when you shoot a bow and arrow, I mean, when you shoot an arrow with your bow, that thing goes a long ways, just like prayer. When you pray, I mean, you know, you never know what you pray, what a prayer will do. You know, you may say, "God, please protect me today," and He goes out and protects you in that day. And you may be a, you may avoid a car wreck. You, there's no telling what you may avoid. You may avoid getting shot. You know, who knows? When you pray that prayer, God answers it that way, in protection. You know, it's like shooting an arrow in a battle. You know, I've seen in a lot of movies where archers will shoot a volley into an uh, incoming force. You know, and it will it will weaken them you know it'll uh, do some heavy damage shooting those arrows and that's the same way with prayer you shoot them prayers out throughout the day you're like you're shooting arrows volleys of arrows out against the devil's army you know against his attacks and it helps prayer does help yeah you might have some bad things happen to you and you know I mean none of us are uh, 
going to be completely safe from attacks, but prayers will, I believe, limit those attacks, you know. But anyway, uh, I didn't mean for this video to be too long, so I hope you got something out of this, and I pray that you did, and read the Word for yourself, and pray that the Holy Spirit gives you something about it. You know, if you have a warrior's mindset like I do, or even if you don't, ask for one. Because we need to be vigilant. We need to be st steadfast and steady and ready. Because you never know when you're going to be called to war. You know? Sometimes it just happens. Sometimes you just wake up and bam, you're in it. Hey, how did this happen? Wow, I'm getting bombarded today, you know? So you need to always be studying, always be training. You know, wielding your sword, wielding that Bible. Read in your word. And remind yourself about the spiritual armor, you know? The helmet of salvation, the, breast, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, your, your shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. And, and like I like to think, you know, the... The prayers being the bow and arrows. You know, you don't have to think that if you don't want to. Just pray anyway. Because that's going to basically be what's going to happen, though. You're just shooting them prayers out like arrows. Helping you. But anyway, God bless you. And I pray that God helps you in your life in some kind of way. And I, I pray that he raises you up as a warrior in this war. Because the laborers are few, the warriors are few. And we, we're calling, God's calling people to arms. You know, get ready. <clears throat> but anyway, we've already won, so stand in that victory. Anyway, God bless you. Amen.